this one. Pressing all the buttons. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. I think I've got my camera a bit low tonight. Look, I've cut my head off. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome. So this evening, I'm going to be showing you how to paint on chocolate. So I got a bit carried away this week and I saw some of these lovely masks in Mexico, the Day of the Dead masks, and I thought, right, I'm going to have a go at this. I have the mould to make the face mask and uh, it was an opportunity too good to miss as Halloween is just around the corner. So I thought I would give it a go. I've pre-painted some of this but I will talk to you about that later on um, and let you know exactly what I've done. I haven't just jumped right in and uh, left it, you will be able to see exactly what I've done but I have to have pre-record a little bit in the hope that I can actually manage to get uh, this all finished before the Great British Bake Off so uh, that's why I've pre-recorded a little bit but I will talk to you about that later. Good evening everyone, I can see some of the names coming up now. So tonight I'm sat still which is unusual because I'm normally running around the the kitchen attempting to temper chocolate and all that but I am doing a chocolate demonstration tonight but what I'm going to do is talk to you about painting on chocolate because that's a big subject and also about prepping molds and I'm looking around because I'm thinking what did I do with my molds and they're right in front of me so that's absolutely fine. So the mold that I'm focusing on tonight is a face mold so it looks like this okay so there's two molds on let's turn that off oh, there's two molds on the um Oh, two moulds, two faces on the mould. Two faces on the mould. <laughs> I've got Charlotte here helping me tonight. Say hello, Charlotte. Hello. Charlotte, my eldest daughter. Um, yes, there's two faces on the mould. Let's get it around the right way. Um, and this is what I've used to make the face mould tonight. Um, I've literally tempered chocolate. Now, if everybody goes, oh, how do I temper chocolate? I've done it literally every single time I've been live. So tonight I'm not going to temper chocolate. So if you do want to have a look, then go to my YouTube channel or go back. I think, did I do it last, last week? week? Yeah, I did it last week. So last week I was tempering chocolate on here. So if you go back to last Tuesday, you will see it on there or you can join me on Thursday morning at half past 11 and I will be tempering chocolate again on there. It's If you're going to demonstrate anything and you've got to in chocolate, you're going to have to temper the chocolate, you see. It's just one of those things that we have to do. So there are loads and loads and loads of reminders about how to do it. So that is what I've used inside my face mask mould. I say there's two faces on there. I originally bought this for a completely different idea and that was because and Charlotte will back me up on this. I am slightly obsessed with Venice. I do think it's a beautiful place. And I was painting Venetian masks. Um, and that's where this came from originally. But then I saw these Day of the Dead faces and thought, actually, that's very good as well. Not to mention all the face painting that I've had to put my children through in the last 20 years. <laughs> She's looking at me now, like, yeah, mum, I know. I have yes, sent my children to school in various guises of face painting. Um, so this is just an opportunity to practice a bit more, really, without actually getting them involved. They're just doing the comments now. So if you want to have a go at doing something like this, the mask, the mask moulds, I'd get my teeth in, um, are available on my website, which is traceskakes.co.uk. I just put that up there now. So if you would like to have a go at this later on, then do please go and have a look at my website. There's lots of other moulds coming in. I've got some ghost moulds coming in at the end of the week that say boo that you can paint. They're really lovely as well. Um, and so, and there's some lots of Christmas ones have arrived as well. Now, anyone that's waiting for, I'm looking round for them now hold on anyone that's waiting for this one that I did last week okay the little heart mold there it's coming it's on its way there's just a few outstanding now for this I'll put it up a bit closer so you can see it there we go so if anybody missed that it's the love heart sweet mold it is on its way in um, hopefully fingers crossed by the end of this week most people we managed to send them out but it was extremely popular much more popular than I anticipated so therefore we've been struggling to get some stocking but we're getting there now so that's all good. So tonight I'm going to look and talk to you about cake painting or chocolate painting, cocoa butter painting, the thing that we're going to be using to paint on chocolate. So every time I've come on here I've painted quite a lot on sugar paste. I do teach online cake painting courses of which they are all on sugar paste however it is also very transferable to chocolate and actually it is the one product that painting on chocolate is really really good for. So painting things like gels and um, I'm just trying to think now pastes things like that you can paint them 
Um, you can paint on chocolate with that, but it will slide off. It will never fix itself onto the chocolate. Now, cocoa butter itself will dry, set and fix onto what you're doing. Now, if you do touch it, you will find that it will come off in your hand, especially if you hold it there long enough because chocolate reacts to heat and cocoa butter reacts to heat as well. So you wouldn't overly handle a chocolate product anyway. So if you painted something, anything, bar of chocolate, what I'm gonna do tonight, um, it will, I'm going to leave what I'm painting on my board because if I hold it, by the time I literally, when I took a photo of this, I took it from one end of my house to the other in my hand, which is stupid. And by the time I got to the other room, I was literally throwing it on the work surface because it was melting in my hand and that was not really what I wanted. So um, what I'm saying to you is that try and keep your hands off anything that you're doing chocolate wise. Do not do what I do learn from what I do, learn from my mistakes. So chocolate work, don't touch it unless you can help it. Unless you've got cotton gloves, they're quite good as well. So um, fingers crossed. So I teach online cake painting. One of the courses that I have got that's available is a beginner's cocoa butter cake painting course. And anything that I do tonight will apply to that as well. So all my beginners that are watching or anyone that's um, tuning in tonight, um, if you are interested in having a go, at learning all about how to paint on cakes or chocolate, then the beginners, I was thinking of the title there, beginners cocoa butter cake painting course is available now. Um, and it's on my website and it's four different projects which look like this. There we go, there's one of them. And there is a lovely Facebook group around them as well. And they are just the most loveliest students ever. A lot of them are on here and they are brilliant. They've done so, so well. There's four different projects and you can learn them all step by step. It's all online, really easy to follow. And you don't need to have to draw or paint. And that's the joy of this. People go, oh, well, I can't draw and I can't paint. You don't need to do either of those because I'm going to teach you how to do those. So that's the idea with that. So tonight I'm going to show you how cocoa butter works, but I'm going to show you not on sugar paste, I'm going to show you on chocolate instead. So anyone who follows me on Instagram, I'll just pop that up now. Nip over there now and follow me because usually when I'm really organised, I um, put up the day before what I'm going to be doing on sugar and crumbs. And I have actually done that the last few weeks. I've been a lot more organised. I'm getting better. Um, so people will have seen my face masks. They were up a couple of days ago so you will have seen what I was doing so I was uber organized this week I don't know why um so let's have a look at what we're going to do tonight now I have already started this because under pressure and on the basis that I literally don't have that long to do this when I first when I did the other one I was there ages and I thought I've got to do this live and I've got to do it fairly quickly so I have cheated a little bit but only a little bit and I've also backed it up with a video. So I've already painted the eyes on my face mask tonight. So what I'm gonna to say to you is I haven't hidden anything. I have recorded it all and I've popped it onto my YouTube channel and it's um, and you can go across there and have a look at it. It's a six minute video just showing you how I've done the eyes because it's quite nerve wracking when you're live and you're trying to do painting straight lines and I just felt that my, <laughs> I would really start to struggle with it. So I've kind of skipped that phase and we're going from there onto the rest of the painting. So that's the plan of action tonight. So let's have a look at what we're going to be doing. So let me just turn the camera down so you can see. So there's my face mask. Uh, before anyone asks, um, the face mask take about 75 grams worth of chocolate. Um, what you do is you temper your chocolate and melt it and then pop it into the mold and literally just kind of swirl it around like that as it starts to get thicker you can use a paintbrush just to pull it up the sides just to make sure it's completely covered um, you want to avoid it getting sort of quite thin around the edges here so about 75 grams works really well so that's what I would recommend for using that and you're going to end up with a face mask like this now I've done mine in white chocolate and the first thing I've done as well is I actually melted some uh, cocoa butter butter and I mixed it with white dust and I've put it over the face itself now this is all explained in the video that I've done earlier so I'm not going to talk too much about that but a lot of the makeup for these uh, day of the dead uh, face paintings seem to have a lot of white on there and obviously chocolate's a little bit yellow so I wanted to replicate that without sort of creating loads of um, brush marks but you will see that on the video if you go and watch that later on so I painted the eyes, again that is explained in this other video and now we can start doing some of the rest of the painting. So cocoa butter is a solid product and you need to melt it. 
in order to be able to paint. So I have a system here which is a metal paint palette which will stay and get hot and underneath here, let's move that across for a second, I have a chrome food warmer. Now this is not specifically a piece of equipment for cocoa butter painting, it is um, just a chrome food warmer, I think you're meant to keep your dinner warm on it or something, I don't know. Um, or you can use, some people have been using a wax uh, burner one of those things which is fine as long as it's all safe um, or you can use if you don't have any of this you can use a, a bowl with some boiling water in it and that works just as well it just means that roughly every 20 minutes you're going to have to go and uh, reboil the kettle so that you've got some boiling water underneath your metal paint palette just so that it heats up so this is going to get hot now there's a candle underneath it there's also a load of <laughs> smoke in my face from the candle right so let me show you what cocoa butter looks like if you haven't seen it before that's what it looks like it's little tiny buttons that we're going to melt so we'll just pop those onto there now usually I set up two different areas so I set up one on that side and one on the opposite side which you can just about see it's going to go out of view when I turn it round but that's okay that's not not too much of a problem and we're going to use some dusting colours so for dusting colours I've got a selection tonight of different ones so we've got um, these are sugar flare colours any colour is fine um, if anybody I keep getting asked questions about lustre colours now next week I have got um, a course coming out which is painting with luster colours. So hopefully next week, and it's part of my Christmas course, um, you'll get to see that. So at the end of this week, beginning of next week, you're going to see a load of Christmas courses coming out and they are fabulous. But one of them focuses particularly on luster dusts, um, which is a really, really good thing to do. So I'm putting out some colours here. So we have got primrose, petal blue and a dusky pink. Black, let's put some white down. Now I tend to split black and white up so I don't end up with them mixing together particularly. So this is just white. And then I have got some red as well. So you can paint these in any colours, anything. Go onto Google and literally put in Day of the Dead Masters and you will see so many. They are amazing. And you can literally just pick one and follow it or you can create your own. You can pick your own colours. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to move that across there a little bit. I am hope I'm going to give you the best possible angle I can. Let's pull that up a little bit. I still need to keep this in shot. This is the main problem. There we go. Like so. All right. So paintbrush wise, my paintbrushes that we use for my course, they're numbered. And for this one, we're going to be using brushes 0, 1 and 2. So let me just find out. Now, number two has hardly got any writing left on it because I use it all the time. So that's very confusing. There we go. So it's number two there. Um, so that is the brushes we're going to use. Zero brushes for very fine detail. Number two is the one I use generally for a lot of painting on cakes. And then number one, again, is a thinner version of this one. So we put them in order like that. So this is the one that we use quite a lot. Now, because this mask is quite... Um, detailed the majority of the painting is going to tonight be with brush one and zero okay just in case anybody's getting confused there that person in question being me of course and you're going to need some kitchen roll or paper towel so that you can clean your brushes on the way and one of these is a good idea, a scriber. And this will come into use, no doubt, very shortly when I make a mistake. And then you'll be able to see um, exactly what you can do with this on chocolate as well. So if you do have a scriber, uh, a scriber that would be good. This is actually a Wilton one. It really doesn't matter. Um, anything like that is absolutely fine. So let's get started. So I've already painted the eyes. As I've said earlier, this will be on my YouTube channel. It's already up. So you'll be able to watch that later on. I'm going to start with paintbrush. Where are we? Number one. There we go, that one. I'm just going to check I've not got any colour in, which I have. So I'm just going to clean that out. So I've been busy painting today, painting Christmas. Right, OK. So first thing I'm going to do, as I say, you can do literally anything with this. It's entirely up to you. It's your design, so it really doesn't matter. You can do whatever you like. But I'm just going to follow what I did earlier and go from there. So we're going to start off with uh, creating a grey colour. So we're going to dip my brush into the cocoa butter, pick up some white and add in 
some black we're going for sort of a light gray color okay so just mix it together now the more cocoa butter you put in the uh, thinner the paint so you don't want to make it too thin and I don't want this to be too dark either okay so when you're painting with chocolate it's exactly the same as painting on uh, sugar paste so there's no difference here at all I'm just going to turn it slightly to try and help myself a little bit hopefully you'll be able to see as much as possible and I'm just going to take my brush and go over the top of the eyelid I've caught the eye a little bit but that's okay I can rectify that and just paint little bit like that now the coverage will be down to how much powder that you have in your um, mix so if you're finding that the chocolate's not covering very well um, then you will need to just increase your powder a little bit um, going back to painting on chocolate molds anyway um, don't try and paint on a chocolate mold that's just come straight out of the fridge so if you've made some chocolate molds a lovely chocolate mold and it's been in the fridge for half an hour and it's set you've taken it out you're then going to need to let it come back up to room temperature before you attempt to paint it so i'm just turning this around i don't know why but it's always easier to paint one of them upside down i think it's just the way you kind of look at it so you're getting the same view as me at the moment so that's what we're going to start with so because the face mould actually has some really nice markings on it, you can follow it to this point. So you'll find there's eyelids there and then there's an area there before you hit the brow. So it is quite, it is laid out for you. It's, it's much more straightforward than it looks. Obviously the lips and everything are all there. So we've done that bit to start with. Let's clean our brush. If you have any questions about painting tonight, chocolate or any of those, then do comment. More than happy to help. Charlotte's on standby for our questions. <laughs> I do not. I've just They're all happy them. tonight. Are you liking and sharing? I have to remind you to like and share. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to read about what people have been up to. So we've got people who have been doing the puppy course and getting on really well. Oh, lovely. That's really good. So, you know, what else do you want? Let's turn this round. So I'm going to mix black next. Now, the other thing I would say with this, when you do turn this, I'm turning my metal paint palette round. It's very hot. So be very careful when you do that. Um, it'd be surprised how hot they get so in order to get a really lovely sort of matte black coverage then again just plenty of black dust in there I'm still using brush number one at the moment are uh, we just cleaning brushes literally just putting them onto the um, the uh, kitchen roll or is there anything we need to use to clean the brushes right so when I clean my brushes between colors i tend to stick i've only literally got four brushes sometimes five in front of me but i just tend to stick to the four brushes and in between every time i change color i will literally just use the cocoa butter and a piece of kitchen mold to clean them up um, but when you finished you can go across to the sink with some hot water you know really hot water and a bit of washing up liquid and really swill those brushes around to get all of that cocoa butter off but then don't dry your paint brushes standing down in the pox you'll ruin them your paint brushes must be upright okay and then they will dry off that way right i'm going to carry on painting so the next area i'm going to do again i've still got brush one i've gone to black now and i'm going to use my brush to create a nice big area around the eye and I'm going to keep turning this around now if you felt you weren't confident with this and you wanted to kind of scratch the design on you could do that with a scriber so if you'd like to create some markings on here you can do that that would be absolutely fine as long as you don't dig into it too much because what you don't want to do is end up with lots of holes in it and then we're going to come right out like this. I'm just using the width of the brush to create the size that I need. And again, if it's not quite covered, just go back over it again. Like so. Now we do the other side. Notice I'm not talking. <laughs> Concentration. I'm concentrating. I know. It's like doing makeup now in the morning, isn't it? I do think this is like doing makeup. Okay. 
there we go all right and so we turn it upside down so we can have a look so she looks like she's got goggles on at the moment what I did find with this when I was painting it, I didn't like it for quite a period of time. And then it's when I started to put the fine detail on at the end, I was like, ah, oh, I get it now. Yes, I can see where I'm going with this. So again, it's just having a bit of patience with this and just keep going. Do look as well at um, Venetian masks, particularly look at Venetian masks because they are beautiful and you can get some fabulous ones there. Where I've just clipped it earlier with a bit of grey, now that's dry, I'm just going to use my brush and just go across that and just tidy it up a little bit. So um, you can always go back and um, fix anything or this is where the joy of this scriber comes in. You can very carefully just scratch away any little tiny errors that you make. So if you are particularly fussy and you don't want the lines to kind of go over, um, you can just use that and just scratch away anything you've made a mistake on. Right, I'm just looking at what I'm doing and just seeing where we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is just make that one a little bit rounder on this side. So someone's asked, um, what does the chocolate taste like when it's been painted? Absolutely fine, no difference. Absolutely fine, doesn't taste any different at all. No change. That's a very good question, actually. I like that question. Uh, no change at all. Right, I'm just going to change my um, colour on my brush now. So I'm just going to dip it in the cocoa butter and just twist it on this kitchen paper and it just takes all the, the colour out. You can see it coming out quite quickly. It just stops me having to change brushes, otherwise I'd need multiple brushes. I'd need about five or six brush number ones to get through this project, but by doing that it just removes it very quickly. Now while the black is drying, I'm just going to move down to the lips and get those done so that they're sorted and out of the way and I don't have to go back and do those. So let's do red. So. I'm going to, again, just dip that into the uh, dust, like so, and create ourselves a nice red lipstick. Now, her lips are there. You don't need to um, work out where they are. They are there, so you can start in the middle. It's all laid out for you. And just follow line on there as long as you've got the outside edge I'll say you can't go too wrong but I might say that when I've actually finished painting <laughs> um, my mold someone's just said is my mold solid no it's not it is actually hollow but you can make it solid if you want to you could just fill it up so because it's hollow it weighs about 75 grams if you want to make it solid it would weigh about 100 so it's up to you I was kind of of the mind that somebody might want to eat it, you see. And although a nice solid lump of chocolate is a good idea, I just wanted to give them a standing chance with it by doing it slightly less. So I'm just painting her lips in now. Again, you can emphasise those or do what you want with them. I'm just going to make them a tiny bit bigger. Come up to the corner. And then we can leave those to dry. So again, if you look at the references on the masks, you can actually make them whatever colour you want. It's entirely up to you. It's, um, it's your choice, your mask. You can have a, this is a great thing you can sit and do one evening is just literally do a bit of face painting on a mask. It's great. Um, so let's get rid of some of this colour again. So I'm just cleaning up my brush and removing the red. Well, while you're cleaning your brush, somebody has a question for you. Oh. So somebody has used your tempering method. Yep. All fine. Yep. Um, and they've poured it into the Christmas tree mould, all fine and shiny, but since uh, it's been put in, the clear box has gone a bit dull. Which clear box? I assume she means the mould, or does she I mean... I poured it into Christmas tree mould and it was shiny, but since I put it in the clear box... Oh, clear box, it's gone dull. Oh, she means the chocolate. So when she's moved it, you know... Into the clear boxes it's you know gone dull you buy with it oh yeah, yeah 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 so the chocolate's gone dull since she's moved it across okay um well they're not airtight so nothing should be affecting it there um when tempered chocolate does uh, i don't know it might be a tempering thing i don't know if it came out the mold because tempering com getting tempering right completely um i'll think about that one but I, I think it's a, it might be there's something wrong with the tempering somewhere along the line. I can't think what else it can be. 
Um, why would it go dull? Put some snow on it, cover it up. Oh, no. <laughs> I tell you what, icing sugar works really well, Maureen. Just get some icing sugar out and, put, and sprinkle it over the top of the tree and it looks like it's been snowing. That's your backup plan if it's starting to go wrong, but it should be okay. Um, I'll think about that one. Right, let's go back to this before I get too carried away because I know this is going to take me a while and I'm concerned about time tonight, which is why I'm sort of... Keep going, Tracy. Right, so I'm going to paint with blue now. So I'm just going to pop uh, my brush into the cocoa butter and we're going to mix up. This is a gorgeous colour. This is called Petal Blue. I absolutely love this colour, but then I like blue anyway, as my children will tell you. So let's start again. We're just going around the outside edge. Close to the black, but not on top of it. And I'm almost at the brow line now. And just take it round. There we go, like so. And then another one here. The amount of colours on these is just amazing. It really is absolutely lovely. Okay, holding my breath just while I get round these little bits. Now the face itself has got other decorations on other than the eyes. So I'm just gonna use my blue here and I'm gonna take my brush just slightly on the side here and down towards the sort of corner of the cheeks. And I'm just going to put a, a sort of a, a line there, just like a, I'll turn that around so you can see it, just like that. And then one on the other side as well. Always difficult to do a matching one, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Someone's just put, um, I stop breathing when you're doing those lines. Honestly, same. <laughs> I'm not breathing much tonight either, honestly. <laughs> it's up very quiet tonight for me. Okay, let's just clean that up again. I'm going to paint a red heart next. Now, a heart is a lovely easy shape, which I'm sure most of you can draw a heart on a piece of paper. So we can paint, all paint a heart. We don't need guidelines for this. We can literally just get some of this red paint here. And we're going to paint a heart right in the middle of the head up here. So we're just going to do that. You can outline it first, like so. And then we can fill it in. I think once you've outlined it, you've kind of crossed most of the bridges, haven't you? You're not going to have too many problems once you've done that bit there. And we can kind of leave that bit to dry. There we go. And now we can clean our brush again because we're done with red for the moment. Oh, it's coming on not too badly. I'm not breathing much tonight. <laughs> well, everybody says they're loving your demo. So oh, good. Oh. <laughs> I might need oxygen at the end of this one. Why do I do this to myself? That's what I'm thinking, you know. Oh, I know. This is a good idea. I'll do this live. Oh, dear. Right. Okay. Round we go again. So we're going to go for dusky pink now. We're going to make this a bit bigger. So we're going to pick up the dusky pink, which is a lovely colour. Now, a lot of the colours we're using tonight, we're using neat. Now, what I mean by that is that we're not mixing um, white in them. I, I tend to, when I do lots of my cocoa butter courses, I tend to mix white in to the lot of the colours because they're so strong. This needs it. This is a really strong, kind of vibrant pattern. So we really need to have that strong colour in here. Right, everybody holding breath now. <laughs> That's me. Right, here we go again. dear honestly whose idea was this charlotte oh, you should have stopped me i oh, know well this although having said that we're okay at the moment yes i mean someone's asked um the you know does calabelle melt any differently sort of to other chocolates in the sense of some chocolates when you pick them up you were saying that, that the mask melted you know a bit uh -huh. quickly does calabelle melt any quicker or slower than others do you think uh, i think they're all much the same if they're belgium chocolate and they've got the same amount of cocoa solids in them it's only if the cocoa solids start to change um, that they can behave slightly differently. Now, prior to Calabao, I used to use another chocolate called Belcolard. 
Do you remember the Belcalade? I do remember Belcalade. Now, I was a little bit obsessed with the Belcalade. So we had to stop having Belcalade because I was eating a lot of Belcalade. <laughs> so we had to switch to Calabao. Now, the only reason why I don't eat the Calabao is because I... <laughs> I was hypnotised to stop eating the calabao. <laughs> it's all my stories coming out here now. Um, so I do eat it occasionally, but not very often. The bel calade, unfortunately, was, I think it was, uh, I think, to be honest with you, it was psychological because it was the same size as those lovely um, Cadbury's giant buttons, which I, I dare not leave alone. They're so nice. I can't have those in the house. So, yeah. Did that answer that question? That's a, that's a very solid answer. It was a solid answer, wasn't it? Okay. All right, okay, she's got blue. I know she's got pink on now. Oh, good. Nobody's, everyone, please hold their breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. dear. Honestly, right. Oh, dear. Normally I'm chattering away, but I'm having to, I'm having to resist a little bit. You'll have to talk for me, Charlotte. Okay. Um, what are we talking about? Round we go. No, you're all right. So I'm now up to the brow lines. The brow line is here. I can feel it on the mould there because the mould's got some nice sort of normal shapes on there as well. So the eyelid is there. That's your first guideline. And then the makeup's kind of area there where you would do your eyeshadow. And then the eyebrows are normally roughly about here. You can feel them when you're painting. Um, so you kind of know once you've got to that point that you've hit it and you know where you are. Right. Now, Wendy said that she's addicted to giant Cadbury's giant buttons as well. So oh, Wendy. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. I can't, just can't have it in the house. It's awful. It's the one, well, that mini eggs. I mean, that's another one, actually. We won't talk about mini eggs because they're <laughs> another one of my my faves. Well, I mean, Nikki's asked quite a good question. Oh, well, good. She, well, she said... Um, oh, Nikki, the Ruby chocolate expert. <laughs> our, Ruby, our resident Ruby chocolate expert. Yes. Saying, she's saying... Um, Oh, I feel like I'd have one side looking really good on the mask and the other side not looking right. as good. So what are we doing about symmetry? Okay, number one thing is um, paint one eye this way round. Have you noticed I keep turning it and then the other eye this way round? All right, because then what happens is you can see it slightly differently. I have no idea why this works, but it does. And as I said, if you are struggling, you can scribe it on as well. So you could always give yourself some guidelines by just scratching a little line on there. So don't worry about anything like that. And someone's just said worried about cracking the mould. You wouldn't you wouldn't crack it um, unless you actually sort of fell on it or something. You won't crack it. They really are quite... Um, quite hard I, I, the only thing you need to be careful of is if you then go to put it on a cake and something like this looks amazing with red roses and fans all the way around the outside of it that looks really nice right where have we got to um what are we on now yellow okay well let's do to yellow now so we're using all our colors here i'm loving your comments tonight they're yeah, making my makeup is the same <laughs> you're making me laugh <laughs> i can't laugh and paint you see this is not on <laughs> Concentrate, I can't you? concentrate. No, I know. Oh dear, dearie me, honestly. Right, okay, yellow next. So we're back over here again. I'm gonna have to turn it around so I can see the side. Still using brush number one, and we're going again for the last time on this bit. So this is the last bit of colour. I tell you what, if we all had makeup on like this, wouldn't we look glamorous with those face masks on? I mean, no one would be looking at our faces um, anymore. They'd be going straight for our eyes, wouldn't we? We'd be looking absolutely lovely. <laughs> Maybe this is a whole new thing, Charlotte. Maybe. Yeah, that's where we're going wrong, you see. We've all got to up our, our eyeshadow game. Do you find um, when you're using different colours that you need a certain, like, different amounts of cocoa butter when you're mixing the paint or is it all pretty consistent it's all pretty consistent the only one that mixes a little bit strangely is the white and white is quite lumpy but other than that no they're all pretty much the same um, the luster colors tend to absorb quite a lot of chocolate uh, quite a lot of cocoa butter not chocolate when you paint with lusters i find that they um, when you add the cocoa butter to the lusters it can sort of um cling uh, they are different to paint with, um, I say, but I'm tackling that next week when we attempt Christmas, where we're going into Christmas mode. I've got some amazing Christmas things coming up. I'm going to do lots of themed weeks. 
So I've got some fantastic projects coming up for you to do in chocolate and cake painting. So it's going to be worth popping back on a Tuesday. It's your double whammy on a Tuesday night. Isn't that right, Charlotte? Yeah. Yeah. Start with this straight to start bake off. with this straight to bake off. Well, it's pastry week, isn't it? So yeah. Okay. Right. There you go. She's looking very multicolored now. You can see the range with this, um, in terms of how you can um, change your colors and do all these different bits and pieces. The color scheme can be literally yours. You you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna go around the heart as well with the yellow. I'm stunned I'm getting through it at the moment actually I've got over the worst bit which is the eyes I've got very steady hands I've got very steady hands apparently what's your tip for having a steady hand or not breathing not breathing <laughs> <laughs> having a sense of humor about it keeping your arm on the table anyone who tries to paint with their arm floating up and down in the air you're not going to be able to do that you do need to keep your arm on the table support your wrist and uh, hold your breath well you don't need to hold your breath in fact that's one of the things I always say when, when I'm teaching painting don't forget to breathe it's a bit like piping as well that's another one I say to people are you still breathing and they all go oh yeah I'm still breathing no you weren't <laughs> right let's go back to our blue and we're just going to put some little drops on here as well so here we go we'll put those on now these are just little teardrops again so you know these are shapes that we're all familiar with so we can just paint those into an outline there's a bit more paint here we'll turn it around again like so and finally we'll put one over there as well Okay, right, we're going to let that lot dry for a second. Um, we're going to clean our brush again. There we go. Right, so we are now going to do black, aren't we? Let's just check. I've done everything. Oh no, I've missed the white heart. Let's just do that bit next. So earlier I painted the little heart um, red. So I'm now going to paint a white heart over the top of it. So as long as this is dry, she says confidently, not knowing whether it is or not. I think it is. Yeah, it's dry. I can then paint a white decoration over the top of this red. Now I might need to do it twice, but I can do it. Okay, so you can paint white over red like so. I might go back and do it again, but I think actually I've done, I've done okay. Looks like it's come out all right. So let's start the outlining process. So, oh no, we'll just finish the nose. Right, we'll do, we're going to do to black now anyway. So let's turn this around. I'm reading your comments again, Wendy. <laughs> have you read that, Charlotte? I have. How long does it take for um, the paint to dry? Oh, ever so quick. So in this um, normal UK temperatures, so anything up to about 21, 22 degrees, um, which is basically near enough all the time, except when it hits sort of peak summertime, it takes one to two minutes really quick and you can touch it and it won't come off. It's, it will set. Um, if you hold your finger on it and, and then pull your uh, finger off like that, it will come off on your hand. So it works. Um, if you were to put a gel colour on here, you literally wouldn't even be able to touch it. It would be off straight away. So you want to, this is what you need to do to paint on chocolate. And I know I've talked about painting on chocolate for quite a period of time in terms of people doing um, painting on bars of chocolate just to practice, you know, go and buy yourself a bar of chocolate and paint on it. Um, this is much more fun and more creative. So um, hopefully, I say, we'll give you some ideas here. Right, so let's increase our pattern now. Let's start with the mouth. So a lot of the mouths on these particular, um, have I changed brush? No, I didn't. Let me change brush. Let's change it over to a zero. So we're going to go down a little bit with the detail. Still got red on there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to decrease the size of my brush to try and help myself a bit. There we go. And we're going to paint the centre line here, going across and out. So it's just a straight line like that. 
Let me just turn it. Do you know, the best way to deal with this is to imagine your face painting someone, I think. Okay, I'll put a little bit of a smile on there. She's very happy about her makeover. And then they have lines that come down here. And then they go, luckily, off the edge of these lips. That's good news, isn't it? So we haven't got to try and get them inside the lips. We can go straight off the edge. Like that. And then the other way. Is everyone still holding their breath, Charlotte? I feel like I am. <laughs> we'll get to the end of this and go, oh, thank goodness, we got through it. Glass of wine, well, we'll be on the wine, yeah, we will. Okay, so that's her lips done for that particular um, pattern. Right, let's go over to the eyes. Oh, we've got a line up the back here. I'm just wondering which brush I used for that. Yes, I did. I used this one. So we are going to go round the eyes in straight lines, she says, starting from the blue going out so we're going to start here and we're going to go a straight line out as far as the yellow so we're just going to literally just do straight lines it's not complicated keep your brush upright so if you want nice thin lines you need to keep your brush point facing the ceiling so this end of this brush needs to be facing the ceiling now I am holding my breath again so we're on zero brush occasionally breathe breathing in and out all right maybe to distract you then bake off chocolate week oh what yeah was the verdict well they didn't only transfer sheets which well, is yeah. which is very disappointing actually because they have had them in the past um yeah the brownies weren't was not their best moment, I don't think. No, oh no, it. they all did terrible with the brownies, didn't they? It got better, I think they all improved as they went on. The white chocolate cakes were interesting. Oh yeah, that was a real eye-opener, because white chocolate misbehaves, usually when I'm live. Okay, we'll keep going. Right, we're getting there now. Let's turn it around. Always move things around. Don't try and struggle with it, okay? So if you're finding um, that you can't reach something, move it, okay? You don't have to hold it, just move it. And then you'll get into a much better position to be able to paint what it is that you're going to be painting. Right, we're nearly there at the end of this one. You could do this, Charlotte. Oh, thanks. I know. <laughs> That's painting my numbers. <laughs> I think he said that uh, she was disappointed they all could have, we all could have done better than them on the Bake Off. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. They could have done all my lovely transfers and wiped the floor with them, I think. I think the white chocolate baking was interesting. That's hard. That is hard. I forget they don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I don't think they give them enough time, do they? It always seems like they're rushing at the end. Do you think they're holding their breath, though? Do I think they're holding their breath? <laughs> What luck for like this, you mean? Yeah, exactly like this. <laughs> yeah, no. Maybe on the showstopper when they're moving them around, I don't know. But Okay, where have we got to? We nearly can't get down the side of this one. Okay, what do we think so far? Angela says it looks fabulous. Oh, thank you, Angela. Everybody's saying it's good, so... I feeling inspired to have a go though that's what I want to know is anybody feeling and thinking after watching something like this that actually they wouldn't mind having a go at doing a bit of painting because it's it's really not as scary as it as you think what would you be your three top tips my three top For tips anyone who's a beginner I've not done it before my three top tips oh gosh uh let me think while I'm doing this um Decent paintbrushes, um, 
there's a woman with a very good online cake painting school yeah, no, lessons from her good, yeah. she's very good yeah um what else would i say give yourself time don't expect miracles to start with um because my beginners will tell you that they've done the tutorial some of them have done them twice three times and i tell you what every single time they've done it it's got better and better and better so just like anything else be kind to yourself remembering that um you've got to start somewhere the very first cake you ever covered probably wasn't um brilliant but if you look forward now to maybe i don't know 10 20 30 40 cakes you've covered since i bet they're all a lot better than that first one so just remember when you do start something new it could be airbrushing or it could be um i'm just trying to think now anything absolutely anything you first do it can only get better and as i say i'm seeing huge huge um improvements with the beginners they're doing really well We've got a lot of lovely comments on here, so oh, yeah, absolutely fantastic! People are wanting to have a go. People are recommending the classes. Do you have a go because it's fun. It is. It's fun and it's very relaxing. And you know, if you are at home at the moment and you can't go anywhere, this is a brilliant activity to do. Um, and for beginners, you get that certificate at the end. Oh yeah, we get the beginner certificate. They a lot of them have got it on here actually. Yeah, you, there's four paints on the beginner's course and if you complete them you get a certificate and the lovely thing is they've all been posting pictures of their certificates when they've arrived at the other end so it's been absolutely lovely to see really lovely and i'm so proud of even what they say the progress they've made and you know what sometimes people go i wasn't very pleased with this one and when you start questioning them about why we get to the bottom of it and then we get it sorted out and it's great it's it's great you know and as i say if somebody's having a problem someone else will probably be having the same problem so we we tackle it as a group and sort it out i'm outlining the heart i didn't say that bit did i but that's what i'm doing and then i'm just going to outline these teardrops as well Turn them round as I go. There we go. Like so. Now, if that was a little bit close there, I can get my scriber and just nip it back a little bit if I wanted to bring that back. There we go lovely madam now let's just put another line underneath this blue one here so i'm literally just going to do a line like that and turn it around and we'll just flick that off at the end there like that right okay so now we're going to put in some little arches going all the way around the pink so all we're going to do is a little semicircle here so you don't need to mark out a semicircle. By the time you put your line in, it will do it for you. So you don't need to create anything special here. We've got the class very therapeutic. Very doing and watching. This. Doing and watching. Yeah, perfect. It is quite a nice thing to do because you're not leaping about. You are sat still, and you know you can just cover some cake boards, or you can make yourself some lollies or something and so i've got lots and lots of painting coming up with lollies towards christmas um and sit and paint them it's great and then you know it's just very relaxing and actually you know you can get family involved or you can design your own masks when i first had this mask i um i was obsessed with venetian masks and i painted so many of these um and it was only when i saw this the other day and i thought oh that's a really good halloween type project isn't it very relevant so let's go for this one so we're heading me on there. You can see how quick it's coming together. We'll just go around this side now as well. Hope you can still see everything. It's mesmerising. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. I just hope to inspire some of you, really. That's what I want to do. I think we're going to be seeing a few masks. Oh, this yeah. Demo. I hope so. I love seeing what they get up to. Well, the mask moulds are on my website. If anybody wants one, go nip over to my website. There's a section in cake supplies that's called chocolate moulds, and they're in there. So if you can't find them, that's where you need to go. 
you'll probably get sidetracked by the transfer sheets but um, yeah they're definitely in there so go and have a look and you'll find the mold in there and then you can have one have a go so all you need is that and a bit of chocolate and some paint brushes a bit of cocoa butter and you're off there we go all right so i've made it all the way around there like so now we're just a little bit more detail again still in black at the moment and we're going to just paint what can only be described as a sort of a teardrop shape on her nose like so so i'm just literally gonna bring that down like that and then there's a little bit going up this side as well so this this was taken inspiration from a mask i saw online okay so this is what i've seen and they are so lovely you i could have chosen oh 10 20 of these masks they're just so nice and then we'll do some little let's put a bit more paint in there actually it's getting a bit dry a few more dots in there heading down there and then we're going to put some around here charlotte man how am i doing for time i'm fine all. what 20, is the time 20 past, seven. 20 past seven perfect we're going to have this done before the bake-off so if anybody's worried about missing the bake-off i will be finished before that good job i did those eyes i think there we go like that and then we're going to just go round each one of these and just put a little dot it's amazing this deep little bit of detail just kind of starts to bring it all together and just the intricacy of these masks is just amazing well, are we all holding their breath again people are being very nice about your mask oh they're being nice very about nice. my mask thank you everybody oh thank you okay and then we're just going to run i might just make sure you can see this i'm just going to run some dots down the side of this one here as well and also this one on this side okay and then nip over to this side and we'll do the same again now the colours you're using, they are um, the sta sort of standard uh, dusting colours, aren't they? They're not, it, does it make much of a difference if you use a slightly different pink? Or oh no, pink? any colours are fine. Um, I tell you what, I reckon spring green would look good on here. The mm -hmm. spring green is a lovely limey green colour, I think that would look good. Um, I just use the ones that I tend to recommend to all my beginners, so black red white yellow pink petal blue they're just standard colors that i really like um and i just think they work brilliantly to be honest um this is what these type masks are they're very or these face painting i should say they're very bright so the brighter the better really for something like this right what else we got to do on this we have got to do eyelashes notice i've been putting those off <laughs> Okay, so eyelashes on here. So we're going to go straight over the grey. I'm just going to paint that little bit in there where I clipped it earlier with the grey. And all we're going to do is start sort of midway. And literally, you can feel it's weird because the way the mould set out, you can feel it kind of rolling off, um, rolling off there. So it is set out for you. So don't sort of think, oh, I'm not too sure where to start and stop. You'll be able to feel it with your paintbrush. So I'll put her eyelashes in on that side. And we'll turn her around. Where are we starting on this side? I'm going to put an extra one in there, actually. There we go. That's better. And I have to go this way. I say, if you make a mistake, you don't like what you've done, you can always leave it to dry. You can either then scratch it off or oh, let's turn that round. Or you can um, just repaint it, just paint over with white and then do it again. Your white's kind of like using, you know, rubbing it out and doing it again. That's what the white sort of comes in into effect with. We'll come this way. Okay, like 
like so. Tiny bit of too much black on that one, you see, so I can just nip that back with my little tool here, little scriber. So if one of your eyelashes goes out of control, then you can just literally scratch it off. And there you go, problem solved, we like. Um, and then we've got the white to do. So I'm just going to clean my brush up. Any questions? Um, just said, uh, Millie's just asked, the dusting colours, they're, uh, they're on your site, you can get them as part of the beginner's pack. Yeah, they? they're on my site. Carol's got some as well. So they're on, yeah, they're, the dusting colours, do you know what? Mainly used for sugar flowers. You've probably got some. You can have a little rummage, see what you've got. But if you want a, a recommended list, then white, black, blue, yellow, primary colours, really important. Um, pink, even though if you've got red and white, you can still make pink. Pink is a really good one. Mixture of greens, uh, woodland green is a great one. Uh, moss green, spring green, they're all different shades of green. They're all really good as well. So anything kind of like that, really. Um, Before we carry on, um, Wayne has just joined us. He is joining from Sydney, where it is 5.25 in the morning. Oh, that's commitment, isn't it? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. That's amazing. That's the time I'm normally awake in the morning. Say, I was I'm just about to say, on, yeah. <laughs> there's a few people on here that I've messaged at that time in the morning. I do apologise. Uh, if you've had, uh, <laughs> if you send me an email, you'll probably get a reply at silly o'clock. So, um, yeah, mad woman that I am. I know one lady's had a reply for me at five o'clock in the morning on here. Right. OK, so we've got a bit of white now. So we're just going to do a little bit of extra highlights. I'm just going to whiten up my heart and you'll see that kind of ch really take on now a much brighter white. Can you see that changing? So it's no longer sort of um, a little bit wishy washy. It's now a little bit stronger. And we're going to go round and we're going to put some dots inside the pink. Using our number one brush. Am I on one? No, I'm not. I'm on zero. I told a lie. I'm just going to add in some detail here. So just a little dot. So you need to make sure this pink is really dry before you attempt this because otherwise it will lift and then you will end up, uh, it will become pink and we don't want that. You want that white to really pop. So if you ever put white on anything, make sure it's really dry underneath before you go ahead and do that. Nearly there. I've gone quiet again. Concentrating. I'm concentrating, Charlotte. <laughs> right. So nearly there. Can't, oh. can't mess it up now. I can't mess it up now, can I? <laughs> okay. We're nearly there. You can see just how the detail of the, you know, little dots everywhere and how it's gone from sort of, you know, at the start she looked, you know, colour after colour after colour round her eyes. It didn't really look much, but when you start adding in this sort of level of detail, you just start to get this overall amazing effect, I think. Anyway, I think it looks fantastic. Going the other way around. There we go. I've done it. Okay, there we go. She <gasps> survived. Okay, I've survived. I can now breathe. Oh my goodness me. Right, there she is. Do you like her? That's what I want to know. Oh, we very much like her. <laughs> yeah, there's the one I did for the... Um, that's not bad, is it? There's two of them there now. Um, so there you go. So that's the two I have done to celebrate this particular painting of this lovely face mask which is just so lovely and I will post them on my Instagram page so if anybody wants to have a closer look at them um, they will be up on my Instagram page shortly so that you can see them because uh, sometimes you can see quite a lot on these lives anyway but it's sometimes nicer to be able to see a picture and kind of zoom in a bit and see what I've done and um, and take a photo of it as well so that you can have a go um, and see if you'd like to have a go at doing some um, painting yourself as say it's very straightforward as you can see 
if you missed the start I said about the eyes I didn't paint the eyes live but what I've done is I've pre-recorded it and I put it on my YouTube channel so if you go across to my YouTube channel which is Tracy Man Cakes you will find um, the video in there it's a six minute video just talking about how I painted the eyes purely because they had to dry in between and they had to be right otherwise I was a bit concerned about the face looking a bit strange painting under pressure um, is difficult and I didn't want to put myself in that position so I did do the eyes separately but I did record them so I feel that you will be able to nip over there and have a look at um, how it works and go from there so hopefully all being well I say if you want to have a go at these you're going to need some white chocolate you're going to need to temper your chocolate and you're going to need to put it into the mold which is this one here which is on my website and say just swill it around once you put it in there just move the chocolate around pop it in the fridge for roughly 20 minutes something like that let it set and then once it's set you will be able to bring it back out when will the Christmas project be available? Oh, Joe! Coming soon. <laughs> oh, Joe, coming. Honestly, I'm coming back on now. Hello, everybody. I'm still here. I'm glowing because I've got studio lights on me, so I'm very warm, and also haven't been breathing much either. Um, yeah, Christmas is is coming out at the end of this week. I have got so many lovely Christmas things this year. I'm so, so pleased with everything I've painted. So I'm really excited to show you what's coming. I think you're going to absolutely love it. Um, there is one that has come out today. Actually, I could show you that one. So on the Cake International Learning Hub, I'm doing this one, which is a penguin. So this is available if anyone wants to have a go at that. Um, it's now on Cake International Learning Hub, which you have to book through Cake International, not through me. Um, but I am painting that now. Um, so that's the first one. But believe you me, there's some stunning ones coming. Oh, I'm so excited about Christmas year. It's going to be amazing. So a huge question just came up there. Was that anything I need to worry about? No, no? good. OK, lovely. Right. OK, how time are we? Half past seven. So I will be back on Thursday morning at half past 11, where I'm going to be showing you. Where did I put them? Oh, over there somewhere easy cupcake christmas toppers so um that is going to be christmas uh, transfer sheets again oh charlotte the model yeah no they're all right you can leave them over there i'll put them on my instagram people will be able to see them better so we're going to be doing some um easy cupcake toppers with transfer sheets so if you want to know about tempering i'll be back on at half past 11 to do that if anybody wants any halloween um transfer sheets i've only got one set left now and i won't be getting any more but i am getting some ghost molds uh, which are coming in at the end of the, the week they're lollipop molds with ghosts that say the word boo and they're good fun and you'll be able to paint those you know so that's good fun isn't it so you've learned it all tonight from the lovely um painting I've been doing here so you will be able to paint them there'll be no excuse and all you've got to do is just paint the word boo so we can manage that one so I will be back um I say Thursday at half past 11 on sugar and crumbs I will also be back next Tuesday at half past six um, and we'll be starting to look at some Christmassy bits and pieces as well because there is a huge amount of course content I've got coming up all sorts of things including painting Karen Davis molds and uh, chocolate transfer sheets and I've got loads of Christmas lollipop moulds and things coming up and of course my beautiful Christmas painting courses which are coming early well end of this week early next week and all oh, they are amazing so please have a look at my website have a look at my Instagram you're going to see them all coming up and um, I'm really looking forward to sharing them all with you you are a lovely audience thank you so much for tuning in on Tuesday and Tuesday evenings and Thursday mornings I do appreciate it um, it's lovely to talk to you all um, I am on Instagram I'm going to put this up now so if you want to follow me go on to Instagram and have a look and I will post everything on there so that you can um, see what I've done I've also got Facebook there we go that's my Facebook page as well someone's just said oh, I forgot I wanted the transfer sheets oh no I'm not getting any more I can't get any more now they've sold out at the supplier so I can try once more but um, there wasn't any left today so I've only got one more set left and that's it I'm afraid so we're going to have the moulds instead so thank you very much for joining me it's been a fantastic evening do enjoy the Great British Bake Off tonight um, if you do need any more information about cake painting classes or any products or you can't find the mask mold or anything else that you want to ask questions about then do please get in contact with me I'm more than happy to help you just drop me an email 
or send me a message through Instagram or Facebook and I will help you. So take care, have a fantastic evening and I will see you Thursday morning at half past 11 on Sugar and Crumbs with Nifty Nozzles. Bye for now.